Hi, this is Mahesh Ravi and in this video we'll be taking a look at this new 3D tool called Spline. The Spline is a 3D tool that you can install on your computer, generate 3D artwork from it and then upload it to your web so that the users can interact with that in real time. So we'll be taking a look at the tool, we'll be creating a 3D artwork in Spline, we'll be uploading that into the web and we'll see how that actually works. So let's get into Spline tool and this is a website where you can download a free version of Spline. So you can click here and you can download it for Mac or Windows. So I've already made my download and I'm going to open the Spline tool. Right. So when you open Spline tool, this is the interface that you're going to get and you can create a new file by clicking on this button and it creates a new document. So on your left side, you can see the layers. So any kind of shapes that you're adding into your scene will appear here. You can see a toolbar which has basic geometry shapes, um, move controls, and on your right side, you will see the property editor. This is where you can actually change the settings of any object that you have in your workspace. You can select that and you can edit the properties of that in here. And finally, we will be sharing the code which is generated from this tool. Let's get started with it. The first thing that I'm going to do is I don't need this rectangle here. I'm going to delete it. So I'm going to select the rectangle and I'm going to hit delete on my keyboard and it's gone. So there is nothing there right now. What I can do is I can go to this tool, click here and I can see a set of tools that we can use in our design. So there are a couple of 3D um, shapes which are available. Preset like a sphere. So if you click that and if you draw a sphere, it will create a 3D sphere right in here. So if you press Alt on your keyboard and move your mouse around, you can navigate uh, it in 3D space. But we are not going to use that. We are going to create um, a rectangle from a 2D shape. So I'm going to click on the rectangle and draw a rectangle right here on the scene. So as you can see, we created a rectangle here. You can see that right in the layer palette and the properties of that rectangle is appearing on the right side of the screen. So I'm going to select this rectangle and right now there is no background for our scene. You can see the background color in here. So I can change the background color to something which is more visible. I'll change it to white. So let's go to white. So we made our background into white. And we have our rectangle right here. So on your right side, we can see the properties of the rectangle. So there is uh, the size. So this is the pixel value of the box. We have corner values here. So corner radius, you can increase that and you can create a rounded um, shape in here. So we'll create a um, rounded, a slightly rounded box. Right? We can also create an extrusion here. So this is basically a 2D shape. We created a 2D shape from a rectangle. So I'm going to just move around to see the object and we can now see that in 3D and you can see that it's a 2D object right now. What we're going to do is we're going to take this object and we're going to extrude the object. So I'm going to just increase the extrusion and we can see the extrusion is here. So if you go to the material editor, material here, you can change the color to something brighter. So let's say I'm going to pick a brighter color so that we can see this right now. We can change the options of color here. So there's a blending mode option right next to color. So once you chose your color, you can go here. This is the visibility and this is the blending mode. So if you click on the blending mode, you can change this to multiply. And we can also set the lighting options, how lighting actually affects this object. So I'm going to change this from none to maybe Lambert. And then you can see how the lighting is affecting this object right now. One good thing that we can do here is that we can also adjust the overlay of the lighting. So if I want, I can change it to screen. And we have a much brighter display here for. Uh, so we have created a shape, a basic shape right here. What I really need to do is that I need to create a display placeholder for my artwork. So I have a couple of artworks uh, that I have done, a couple of surrealistic work that I have done, and I need uh, this to be displayed on this 3D environment on my website. So this sort of like a placeholder where I'll be putting the 3D work in. So I'm going to take an image and I'm going to drag and drop it to the window. So we can see that immediately on your layer palette, you can see the image also is uploaded here. So I'm going to scale it down a bit so that it fits our display. And you can see that the position of the image is not matching with the position um, of this 
background. We are seeing it in a slightly distorted way because our camera is not looking straight at the object, which is perfectly fine. So we, if we select the shape or the image that we imported and we reset the rotation of it to zero, it will have the same um, angle or the perspective of the placeholder. And this is what we wanted. So we can now move it and we can bring it a little forward. We're going to move it and place it right here. So that the image fits in there perfectly. You can see it and uh, the placeholder, it's looking pretty good. We can also change the background color. So if you want um, this to show the color of what is there in the content, so we can accordingly adjust that. So it will be a really interesting style that the color from the image bleeds into the placeholder. So I have one frame here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this frame. So I'm going to press Control D on my keyboard and duplicates the rectangle. So I can move it. I can push it backwards. Maybe scale it down a bit. So we have the second box in here. It's sitting in two angles, which is perfectly fine. So I'm going to take another image, drag it here. So just like what we did previously, I'm going to change the rotation or reset the rotation of this image to zero so that this is sitting in the same plane as the 3D work. So one image is on the front and one image is on the back side. So we have two images right here, which is showing this. I'm going to export this into a code. We are going to convert this into a code and it's pretty easy. All we have to do is we have this 3D thing. We go to the right side toolbar and we can see publish and share. So the type is going to be a public URL. We are going to, we're going to save it to a public URL and uh, we can click on the export button right here. Yes, so we have the public URL of our graphics and also we have an embed code of this and this is something that we want, right? So we're going to copy this and I'm going to paste it to my Evernote snippet right now so that we can take it and we can embed it on an HTML website and see if it works, right? So now we're going to go into the next level of this. We're going to open a CMS editor and we're going to go in and see if whatever we generated right now is working on an HTML website. So let's go into Wix. So right now we are in Wix CMS editor. We are in the workspace of Wix and we're going to add an embed HTML2. So we'll go to the embed, select the widget. So this is where we are going to enter our code. So when you click on this, you can click enter code and you can copy your uh, 3D graphics from here. So I'm going to take the code that we just pasted into Evernote, copy that and paste it into our HTML settings here. Click update and we can start to see the 3D graphic here. So let's just bring it up to scaling uh, it up so that it fits in here. We can see all the elements. Now let's see if our animation is working. Is it interactive? Is it working in real time? So what we're going to do is let's preview the site and see it interact with your mouse behavior. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you understood how to use Spline tool. It's a really, really good tool um, to make your websites more immersive and addictive. So try it out and I'll see you with a new video soon. Till then, bye.